Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. If you want to help me get some small taste of revenge against the YouTube algorithm, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And our first story of the day is by Aphaza. High school teacher used to call me a loser and I would never amount to anything. Ran into her 20 years later on an elevator at my office at the same university where her husband works. I went to high school in a small southeastern US town. During my junior year, 11th grade, I had a US history teacher who always acted like she was better than anyone else. She was the type that would always say things semi-jokingly about students, which she thought were funny, but came off as pretty mean and hurtful. Unfortunately, she was really popular with parents and the administration because, to be fair, she was a good teacher, and her students did well year after year on the AP exams, taken to earn college credits if you get a high enough score. So she got away with insulting whomever she wanted to insult. Also, she was the type who bragged about being married to a professor. She actually had an affair with him when she was his student, and he was married to his first wife, but I digress. At the time, I was dating a guy, also a junior, who happened to be the friendly neighborhood school drug dealer. This was the 80s, so pot and mushrooms were the go-to recreation. Nothing too hard, and looking back, I think it was a far more innocent time. Our school was a notorious party school and sat adjacent to the university's dorms. The university was a notorious party school as well, so the town was known around the region as a party place. Most parents took it in stride because many of them were university employees or local business owners. Our teachers were pretty cool too for the most part. Many of them went to the same university so they knew the town and the local vibe. However, this teacher liked to talk crap about the party type kids, saying they wouldn't amount to anything, end up in jail, die of overdoses, etc. She was always picking on us, saying we were bad eggs and losers. One day, grocery shopping with my mom, we saw her in the parking lot and she came over to speak to us. She started off by saying that I was doing poorly in her class. I wasn't, I had an A at the time, and that my grades were declining because I was dating that boy in the most dramatic, snarky, southern accent you can imagine. Then she proceeds to tell my mom she was raising a junkie and a hoe and that I would not amount to anything. My mom shot something equally snarky back, I can't remember what, but she came to my defense swiftly and my teacher scurried off with a shocked look as my mom embarrassed her pretty severely. My parents were the type of parents that were pretty laid back. They knew I wasn't doing anything worse than what they did in college. I just started partying in high school. Looking back, maybe they were a little too laid back. The rest of the school year was uncomfortable to say the least. I dreaded going into her class. She seemed to make my life miserable at every chance and now worked in insults about my mom too. I was really hurt and never forgot how mean she was. I did graduate the next year, went to college, worked for many years in government, then went back to school and got my PhD. I became a professor at the university in my high school town. I never ended up being a junkie or a hoe, however. Riding the elevator one morning to my office, guess who gets on with me? Yup, she was going to visit her husband, who was a professor in another department in the same building. I wasn't going to say a thing, just stand there biting my tongue but she recognized me, but couldn't remember my name, so I reintroduced myself, and she exclaims, Oh, OP, I can't believe it's you. How are you? I gave a polite but cool response, and she said in her same snarky tone, What are you doing here at so-and-so? I looked her dead in the eye and said, Going to my office. Your office, she replied. Oh, aren't you the funny one? I didn't say anything, but when I got off the elevator, I turned around, pointed down the hall to my office, and said, down the hall on the left, so-and-so department. If you want to drop by, ask for Dr. OP. And I smiled the fakest smile, flipped her off, and said, good to see you, returning the snarky attitude. Additionally mildly amusing information, I worked with her husband a few times on various committees. He used to try to get me to go to dinner or out with him. I think just her knowing I was a professor was petty enough for me to feel gratified. Thanks for reading. All I know is the beautiful thing is if she tries something, you can almost guarantee that you can take their husband on a date, not actually do anything, just saying. But all you gotta do is record the interaction or tip them off or somehow tip them off so they show up while they're at dinner together. I know it's mean, but uh, in a way, it's kind of helping her out because they know the truth. 
If you were in this situation and the professor was trying to go out with you, would you tip that old teacher off about it, knowing the potential fallout of the situation for both of them? Let me know in the comments down below. And our next story is by Amphibianomus, The Fax Machine Revenge, or How I Got Rid of a Post-Order Company Trying to Get Me to Pay for Goods They Didn't Deliver. So, the 90s. Cultural high point of good dance music and the fax machine. In those days, our national mail slash telco operator here in the Netherlands decided to introduce fax machines for at home that were relatively cheap. Aptly named Home Fax, they used rolls of thermal paper for printing faxes. For sending faxes, you had to feed paper in page by page. No auto feed. This becomes relevant later. So my then girlfriend ordered a summer dress via post order. Mind you, online shopping wasn't yet a thing. You ordered from a catalog and called or mailed in your order. So a few days after her order, the postman brings the parcel. Inside, not a summer dress, but a pair of enormous white granny underpants. Well, we had a good laugh, put it back in the parcel, and went to the post office to return it to the post order company. That's that, one would think. But nope. After a few weeks, the first letter comes in, demanding payment for the dress my girlfriend ordered. Simple mistake, I thought, so I called the post order company, explained what happened, and the lady said she'd take care of it. A week later, another letter arrived with a more sternly worded style, urging us to pay within three days or else. So I called the post order company, explained to another person what happened, that person also said they'd take care of it. They also asked for proof that I didn't get the dress. What? But, well, I had the receipt from sending them the darn undies back, so I sent them that. You see where this is going. Four days later, a pissed letter telling us to pay within 72 hours or else they'd send it to collections. So I called the post order company again, explained to another person what happened. That person also said they'd take care of it. But I'd lost my confidence and called them again the next day. And of course, yet another person told me that no, the conflict wasn't resolved yet, but they'd make note of my call. Right. The next day, same exact story, but again with the remark, I didn't prove I hadn't received the dress. I got a bit agitated and asked them how in the heck am I supposed to prove I don't have something? I got a bit agitated and asked them how in the heck one is supposed to prove not having a thing. So here's where the petty revenge comes in. I write and print a letter asking, how many times do I have to say we didn't receive the dress before you'll take us seriously? Then I fed that letter halfway through the fax and taped the bottom and top of the page together. So now there was an endless roll of text in my fax. I dialed the fax number of the post order company and hit send. After about half an hour, their fax disconnects. About 10 minutes after that, I receive a phone call from an absolutely infuriated manager of the company asking me what the heck I'm doing. I asked him what the heck they were doing and explained the situation. It was resolved the same day. It's still the most petty and most effective revenge I've ever enacted. I mean, hey, sometimes you just gotta be annoying. What I've learned is in situations where you have a matter that you have to deal over the phone, Sometimes the people on the other end aren't the most responsive. So sometimes you gotta take it upon yourself to call them once, twice, daily, until you're effectively annoying them enough for them to actually deal with it. Our next story is by Svirfnil. They asked if I saw a phone laying in the street. Nope, not in the street. Hadn't seen it. Moved here a few months ago. On one side, my neighbor is a cool little old man on the corner of the block. On the other side is a family with at least one kid in their late teens, maybe early 20s at least past high school because school's back in session and I see them around on weekdays. Could be more than one, but there were quite a few that age who come and go, and I don't know them. They live in a massive McMansion and have several cars between them. The rest of the houses on the block are built in the 1950s or so. Not bad homes at all, but nothing huge. It's not a busy street, zero traffic, and the houses are spaced pretty far apart. The neighbor's teens were walking through my backyard and the old man's backyard to get to the street around the corner, sometimes at night. We have two young kids who go to bed at around 8.30 and the youngest has issues that severely affect their sleep, causing her to be up all night at times. Sometimes they were woken up by the neighbor's teens walking through at like 11pm talking, laughing, or playing music on their phones. Part of the reason we chose this house is how quiet and spacey the neighborhood is. 
After a couple of weeks of this, about four to five times, I went to talk to the neighbors. The dad answered the door and I say something like, Hey, how you doing? I'm OP. I live over here. He just says, uh, what do you need? So I told him I have two kids who go to bed early and his kids wake them up when they walk through the yard. He said he would tell them to quiet down. I said, no, they're coming through in the middle of the night. They should just stay out of my yard. He said, only at night, just smug. His expression and tone really pissed me off. So I said, I mean freaking ever. He made a huh noise and shut the door. So I walked back home. A few days go by and I hear the teens one evening around dusk, four of them heading to their house. So I go outside and ask, is this your yard? They didn't say anything, kept walking and started laughing. A couple hours later, my wife was in the kitchen and sees a couple of them in the old man's yard close to our yard with a flashlight pointed at the ground. We watch them for a few minutes and when they come into our yard, I go out the back with my flashlight, shine it at them and said, I'm about to call the freaking cops. They ran back to their house. The next morning I was mowing and find what they were looking for. An iPhone. Looked new, no power. I pocket it and keep mowing. Around noon my bell rings, it's the mom. The dad was standing at the end of my driveway, I guess he didn't want to talk to me. Hey, my daughter lost her phone while she was out walking last night. Have you seen it around, like, in the street or anything? Nope, haven't seen any phones in the street. They say, have you seen one anywhere else? I say, can't say I have, but if I find one in the street, I'll let you know. I can see the gears in her brain working. She doesn't look happy. By the way, I talked to your husband a few days ago about your kids in my yard. They didn't listen, so if it happens again, I'll call the police. She says, are you serious? I say, they're waking up my kids and this is private property. I'm very serious. She makes the same, huh, noise her husband did, walks off the porch and back to him. I guess she told him what I said because he made angry noises that I couldn't understand from that porch. They walk away and I go back inside. I know some newer phones have tracking, so a little later when I was running errands, I dropped it in a trash can in a gas station bathroom. If they tracked it, maybe they went and dug it out. Good luck to them, it was one of those 50 gallon cans full of who knows what, and I dropped it down the side so it would slide to the bottom. They haven't been back in my yard since. Yeah, if they keep it up, maybe it's time to invest in some sprinklers. Maybe get some motion sensing ones so if anybody ever gets close, you'll get a nice refreshing welcome from the lawn. This next story is by Ben H3, thwarting a drive through scam. So I'm in a drive through at a fast food restaurant, I pull up to the window to get my food. A polite young gentleman tells me the total is $10.91. I give him 11 bucks. When he hands me my change, he drops the nickel on the ground. Now normally when this happens to me, the employee will react and say, oops, or I'm sorry, and I'll just dismiss it, say no big deal, and drive on. But this time the employee said nothing and just looked at me as if nothing had happened. It was impossible to not hear the nickel hit the concrete. So immediately I had a weird feeling about it and I was going to get my darn nickel. I already knew what to expect when I looked down at the ground. Quarters and nickels and dimes galore. A few pennies but 95% was silver. So I reached down to get my nickel and as I was doing that I said to him, Oh look at all this money people dropped. And I took all of it. When I came back up with my handful of silver, his whole mood was different. He handed me my food without even looking at me. I wonder, in a very weird world, if that could be like some ploy by them to get a little extra pocket change. Every so often when there's a quarter or a dime to hand out, oops, sorry, drop that one, but don't say anything, just hope they leave it, maybe they won't hear it. Then OP rolls up and gosh darn OP took all my pocket change. And our final story of the day is by RX Trixie. Blame me for an accident that was your fault? Right back at you. I work as an online tutor for a company that works for an online platform. I have to write answers to questions and get paid by how much work I get done. Today, I was working on one solution and this other person logged into my account. It's her job to go review the solutions, but I was working overtime to complete a solution. She started working early to make extra bucks. This resulted in me losing a solution I spent 5 hours writing. I won't get paid for this either. To this, she said, it was your fault to be honest. I know it's not her fault, it was an accident, but the way she blamed me annoyed me so much. 
Since she also gets paid by the hour, I changed the password to my account so she couldn't log in and review my answer and she doesn't get paid for the day either. Then I changed it back and told her I didn't change it and told her, to be honest, it's your fault if you can't even type. I've written a strong worded message to my manager, if I lose money because of her, I'm quitting. First of all, I don't understand the dynamic here. Why would you share an account? And when you do have to share an account, have it be a setup where you can lose progress. I would be complaining to my manager every single day if I lost five hours of work until they fixed that issue. Second of all, I was thinking, it's great this worked out because what if it was one of those websites where you change the password and the website says, you can't use the same password again? You would have been a little screwed. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.